You know, we could all use some encouragement. And I've got some good news for you. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Mark. Hey, greetings, friends, and welcome back to 5 Minutes with Mark. I'm glad you're here. We're picking up the story, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, at verse 66. Now, as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch, and a rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. But he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the words that Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. Stop there. Mark's gospel is Peter's voice. Remember, Mark's purpose in writing the gospel was to record Peter's teachings, everything that Peter said. Through the gospel of Mark, Peter is very much downplayed. There's, there's not, he is not a, the prominent person that he is in some of the other gospel stories because it's his voice and he's a humble man and he doesn't want to be center stage. He wants Jesus to be center stage. But here we have this moment. Now, there's 11 guys in the garden and they all run away. Peter starts running, but then he circles back and he follows at a distance the crowd and right into the high priest. I mean, he's bold to a point. He goes in. He's standing around in the courtyard warming his hands by the fire waiting to see what's going to happen, hoping maybe to catch a glimpse of Jesus, maybe to be there to, to wrestle him free and get him out. I don't know. We don't know what he's thinking. We just know that he was bold enough to go to the courtyard of the high priest and Jesus is inside being interrogated. Servant girl sees him. I've seen you before. You were with him. No, no, no I'm not. I, I don't even know who you're talking about. Why are you here then? I don't know. A little later, she's talking with some of the other people who were there in the courtyard. I mean, this is a kind of a fascinating little scene, right? It's the middle of the night. Something's going down here. This is weird. People are, you know, curious. Those who are on the inside want to know what's about to go down. They're standing around the courtyard at night, you know, just hanging out. And she's talking, says, I think he's one of them. I think he's one of the followers of that Jesus guy who's inside being interrogated right now. And Jesus, you know, is right now being falsely accused and set up by the council, the high priest, the chief priests, elders and scribes, to be executed for nothing. And here's Peter in the courtyard. And he overhears them talking about him and he says again, I, I, I know, I don't even know anything about this. I'm just here in the courtyard in the middle of the night for no real reason except it's cold and I'm warming myself by the fire and a rooster crows once. Then, then some of the crowd, some of the other people there in the courtyard come over and go, look man, we, we hear your voice. Isn't that funny? You've got a hillbilly accent, Peter. You sound like you're from the hills up far in Galilee. Essentially, what's happening? You can't hide your accent. We know you are not a sophisticated man from around these parts. You sound more like a Galilean fisherman. You must be one of his followers. Why else would you be here? And he vehemently denies it. And he begins to curse and swear. He he does a very human thing, doesn't he? Think about 
the pain and the angst and the frustration and the, the, the anger that he's got built up, and yet he's, he's terrified because he knows that if he makes too much of a scene, he's going to be in there too. Now he's boasted to Jesus, I'll die for you. He's probably the guy who pulled out the sword and cut off the guy's ear. I'll fight for you. Now, now he's under real pressure. Will you stand with me even if it costs you something? And he begins cursing. He just, all of that emotional explosion burst out of him. I don't know what the blankety blank blank you're talking about. You're all blankety blank blank blank. It's what happens. And as Peter is cursing and denying that he has any knowledge of who this Jesus they're talking about is, the rooster crows a second time. And then Peter remembers. He said, before the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. And he's done it. And he remembers it, and it says he, he wept. How does Mark know this happened? Well, Mark knows this happened because this is part of Peter's story. And Peter looks at him. Can you imagine? Peter is an old man. He's sitting there telling this story to Mark. It's like, you know, 30 years on, around AD 62. And he's remembering this night when he absolutely failed. I mean, absolutely failed and did exactly what Jesus said he would do and what he swore he wouldn't do. And he hangs his head and weeps. And I bet 30 years later when he told the story, he could not do it with dry eyes because it would have hurt that bad. And yet, it's important. It's a really, really important, critical point. Because we are Peter. We are the ones who deny him on a regular basis. We're the ones who fail to follow through on our commitments. We're the ones who boast, I'll, I'll serve Jesus forever. Then we don't. We get uncomfortable. We get ashamed. We get embarrassed. We get overwhelmed, we get busy, we fill in the blank, excuse. Fortunately, this was not the end of Peter's story because Jesus is all about redemption. But I think this failure, this moment, this is what gives us our understanding of why Mark's gospel downplays Peter so much how could he be proud enough to put himself front and center in his own story he doesn't he hangs in the background a little bit except for here where he's open and honest and really owns his failure there's a lesson in that for all of us see you next time Hey friends, I'm so glad that you're enjoying this Bible study and I hope that you'll like it and that you'll share it with others either by word of mouth or forward the, uh, the link that's here. Make sure we get the good news of Jesus out to as many people as we can and hopefully this is a way that's engaging, entertaining and encouraging along the way. It really is good news. And if you want to know more about me, check out my website, theeclecticmonk.com. See you soon.